Hi everybody, we are here with the one and only Mrs. Lucinda Berry. Hello Lucinda. Hello Alex. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, very well. Shame to be at work on a lovely sunny day like today, but, but yeah, I'm well, thank you. Oh, good, good. And um, have you got your cup of tea to hand? I have indeed. And I've even got a very apt mug. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I love that. I'll just say the number one friendly and dedicated NHS worker. Amazing. And what's your tea of choice in this amazing mug? It's actually a pucker and it's a lean matcha green. Very healthy. I've been naughty and I'm on a builder's tea. I need to, need to up my game a bit. <laughs> um, so obviously from your mug, that shows um, a bit of a bit of a hint to your line of work. Um, can you share a little bit more about what you're doing and what your job title is? I can indeed. So I am um, privileged right now to work for the NHS. Um, I am the Claims and Inquest Manager for uh, an NHS Trust in Hertfordshire. So my day job is dealing with um, litigation against the Trust uh, in the form of clinical claims and non-clinical claims and also inquests. So assisting the coroner with his inquiries, um, as well as um, ad hoc medico-legal advisory work, which as you can imagine uh, in the current climate has been uh, quite busy and quite varied. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm an NHS girl through and through and have been for 10 years now. Amazing. And as you say, probably one of the most uplifting places to be in terms of everyone pulling together in this crazy pandemic that we're in. Yeah, no, completely. I have to say um, it's been really inspiring and really empowering to be at work during this time. Um, you know, I recognise that I'm fortunate enough to, to still have a job because uh, so many people aren't um and to not be furloughed but it's it's just amazing the whole atmosphere throughout the whole hospital although we've got no um visitors so it's quieter in terms of patient um, sort of families in the corridors etc the whole the feeling amongst the staff that i've been involved with on the whole is just amazing it really is you know the courage and the bravery you just you you can't even begin to imagine what they're going through you know how some of them are just putting the patients first and protecting their families they they're moving away from their families um and just giving 110 percent in these extraordinary times and you can see it on the front line and you can also see it with our um like the senior management as well it's uh it's yeah it's really fascinating um but but just amazing really amazing and the public as well, you know, the donations that we've had and the kindness from the public. Um, and it's reached the staff of all levels, you know, we got Clarins goodie bags and you, you kind of feel a bit like, I'm not worthy of one of these, you know, I'm not a doctor or a nurse on the ward, but they're, they're really good and they share everything. So we've got a little Clarins goodie bag um, with hand cream and um, body wash and face masks. And then we've got some other um, really strong, um, uh, not medical hand cream, but kind of what I'd call hardcore hand cream, which was amazing. Um, and, and a coffee machine. We got this fantastic coffee machine donated to our corridor. So it's really little things to, um, a lot of people I'm sure seem really minor, but when you're in times like this, that the, the random act of kindness is amazing. And we've got had so many um, kind of well-being plans um that have come into action and you know these random acts of kindness like someone left a bag of donuts in our office just as a, a you know thank you for what you do and pay it forward you know we've done something random and kind for you go and do it to someone else so just everyone keeping each other going is just brilliant the, the camaraderie and everything so um yeah I'm, i feel really privileged to be able to to be at work right now Oh, that's so amazing. And I think, although you say you're not deserving of it, you absolutely are. And the little things make such a big difference now. Um, so if you want to share any of that Clarins with me, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> Sharing is caring. It's my new motto. <laughs> exactly. No, I think that's great to hear. And, and it's so easy for everything to get lost in news reports and figure, facts and figures, but actually to hear it from you and to actually see, see it in action, I think it's amazing. Um, so thank you for what you do. <laughs> don't, don't blush, Luce, don't blush. So that's your work life. And then if we switch to personal life, 
um, obviously everything's a little bit different at the moment socially. Um, so obviously you're a mum as well. And it's how are you, how are you coping with the lockdown life um, back at back at home? So I think, I mean, I'm really lucky being a key worker that Olivia's been able to go to nursery still. Um, and I think that's been really good for her. So she's been able to, to keep her at like a degree of normality. Um, uh, and she's really thriving at nursery, which is um, fantastic. Um, she's definitely missing her grandparents. Um, uh, so we've got lots of uh, WhatsApp calls and Zoom family calls and stuff. So um, because she's kind of got that part missing in her life at the moment i'm just just trying to do all i can to keep her busy and um keep her entertained which can be a challenge but very lucky in that living where we do living in the countryside living on a farm we've got outdoor space so the dog is walked within an inch of his life every day <laughs> and he sees and of course olivia being at the age where she wants to hold him on the lead so the dog is walked on the lead almost constantly around the farm, um, which she loves doing, but he looks at me, he's like, not again, really? Are we going back in the field again? We've been three times in our field. Um, so, so yeah, I just, um, we're doing a lot, trying to do things together and family meals and stuff. And although she's only two and a half, nearly three, she's, she's quite savvy and she understands that there's bugs. So she can't see people because there's bugs. Um, and like she'll see me on FaceTime to friends and stuff and like yourself and she's very keen on your dog and your husband she, yeah shall we go and see Alex shall we go to Alex's house tomorrow and now we'll, there's bugs at the moment oh when the bugs go we'll go and see Flip <laughs> so, um, so yeah just just trying to keep her busy um, and keep a degree of normality to for her um, and yeah, lots, lots of food. Food is a real big part of my life right now. It always has been, but now planning the weekends largely around meals. Um, <laughs> How it should be. Her, and she, she's quite enjoying, she quite enjoys a bit of cooking or she says she does, but she just ends up eating. If you're chopping a carrot, the majority of the carrot gets eaten before it makes it to the saucepan. Um, so we're working on that balance. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that's probably what we're doing kind of as a family at the moment to just try and keep everything going as normally as we can amazing and it's also as a as a mum it's really important to have your own time as well and I know that you've um recently got back into some cycling as well has that really helped during lockdown just to be able to get out of the house I, I imagine yeah no completely um it's actually thanks to uh, Mintridge's 771 um campaign I got my squad together um and uh we did our 771 and we completed 7.7 .7 marathons i think it was you'll correct me if i'm wrong 200 odd miles which is amazing um and yeah on the back of that i just kind of rekindled my i want to say love but love could be a bit strong my <laughs> Uh, enjoyment of exercise and I think it's really important to just as you said um, me time so yeah um, I've been running a little bit um, I have been cycling a bit and I've really really been enjoying that and funny enough it's on the, my work days that I feel most motivated to do that I'm not quite sure why but I, I get home from work and I'm just kind of in the zone and then just to put my earphones in and put my trainers on and just go either for a run or out on my bike uh, mm -hmm. it's just brilliant and music I found music really helpful as well so my Spotify has been on constantly on all sorts of random playlists um, but I just think it in an evening it just helps you kind of lose yourself almost in a good way um, and just to sort of have that bit of a, a debrief to yourself in your head of your day or of your week or, or what's going well and what's not uh, and just kind of reflecting on stuff um, which I think probably you take for granted in the normal day-to-day -day life, or you probably think you don't need to do. Uh, and at the nap in current times, I think it's all sort of come to the forefront and it's made people realize actually, no, we need, do need to check in. We do need to check out. We do need to have debriefs over things. Um, so it's just reminding yourself of the importance of doing that. And I'm finding, yeah, music and exercise um, are I'm, I'm re really good, really good right now. So Amazing. thanks. Amazing. Yeah, and, and I think that's so true. I think um, lockdown has helped people acknowledge that they have to acknowledge their feelings, whether they're positive or negative, that's okay. To feel okay is fine, to feel not okay is fine, but just to realise that that is, you know, a normal feeling, that's great, that's not okay, move on. And I think that's so true. And 
um, listening to music, going for a run is the perfect time to really think that. You've got lots of thinking space. Um, yeah. That is, unless your uh, Spotify playlist consists of any 90s classics, then I'm assuming you just sing along um, and you don't have thinking space. <laughs> Completely. And or musicals. Musicals is a good one as well. You're suddenly running along and you're thinking you're Nicole Scherz and you're in Cats and you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, realizing. Hamilton. That the arms have been going like, oh God, is anyone driving past me? <laughs> no, that's what we like to hear. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I'm going to have to get you the Cats album now. Um, <laughs> this is brilliant. Um, and it's that's great. Showman, so, Greatest Showman's another one. Oh gosh, Josh, I think we need to have, I think you might have to sing it at the end of this. <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> um, oh, that's amazing. And then, so... The other opportunity uh, during lockdown for everyone is there's more time for learning new skills, watching um, new shows, podcasts, activities. Is there anything that you've been watching that um, you would recommend to everyone? I have to say I'm not a huge TV person and I'm not very good on, um, on podcasts either, but a very good friend of mine recommended Normal People and I'd heard about it and read about it, uh, not read the book, but um, was aware of people that had so um, over one weekend I did revert to sort of university times and I binge watched normal people over one weekend uh, and I'd forgotten that feeling of the I've got to watch the next episode I've got to watch the next episode it took me back to my Jack Bauer 24 days um, so yes normal people I have watched and strongly <laughs> recommend I think it's brilliant um, it, yeah um, that's probably been my only thing um, sort of from technology perspective, as I say, podcasts, uh, I haven't, haven't got into, um, and even books, I have to say, I, I sort of, I have the good intention and I've, I've bought a few new books, but they are still on the side at present, I think, because I don't know, I just, by the time it comes to thinking I'll read a book, I get distracted and chat to friends. I've probably found talking to my friends, um, that I've enjoyed more than doing something like that. Um, after exercise, of course, if I can still talk in a coherent <laughs> sentence and I'm not completely exhausted and uh, unable to string a sentence together. I completely agree as well. I feel like connecting with friends is one of the biggest positives of, I was about to say of Netflix, not of Netflix, it's the biggest positive of down. Like I feel so much more connected to school friends that I haven't, you know, had quality time with for so long in a big group. Um, and it's very hard to get a big group of people in one place. Um, so actually to have these Zoom calls, I think that's going to be something that goes well beyond um, lockdown. I don't know how long Zoom fancy dress quizzes will last, but it's, it's <laughs> Must be it's running something up that's very <laughs> I know. I should be getting more knowledgeable, but I'm, I seem to be dropping down the leaderboard in quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Luz, thank you so much for, for chatting to us. Um, and just before we leave, um, I would like to ask um, who you would like to nominate to appear on Positivity next. So I am going to nominate uh, my superstar mum, Julia Sibley. Yay! Is there a reason for this? Are we able to hear why you want to nominate her? Um, so... My mum is a bit of an oracle and um, she works in hospitality, usually she works for a charitable trust um, and at the beginning of lockdown, you know, she'd done a lot, quite a lot of volunteer work uh, for Hospitality Action Charity and um, doing a lot of calls and helping with COVID um, related hospitality issues. So I think she's just got a really good insight um, to sort of the effects of COVID from the hospitality perspective and the charitable perspective. And she's super duper positive all the time. Um, and um, so I think she would just be, she'd be, she'd be a good person. I'm hoping. Yes. Don't let me down, mum. <laughs> amazing. Oh, thanks so much, Luz. It's amazing. And we'll see you soon. See you.